With the planet literally burning up, rising temperatures are having disastrous effects on global climate. Vanishing glaciers, carbon dioxide levels at an all-time high, some of the hottest temperatures in decades, and predictions of entire nations being submerged by rising sea levels has left areas like the Sundarbans particularly vulnerable. Our house is about 900 meters. সেখানে নদী গর্ভে আমাদের বাড়ি ঘর বাড়ি সব ভেঙে যায় জমি জায়গা সব নদীতে পড়ে যায় যার জন্য সেখান থেকে উঠে এসে আমাকে এখানে আবার নতুন করে ঘর বাড়ি করতে হয়েছে বহু ঘাট এই জানি সে কল পানি পর্যন্ত যদি কালে কালে দেখা উচিত সেটা বড় সারা সমুদ্র যায় সেটি ঘর তে না ঘর ছিল ঘর আগু সারা সমুদ্র ইজ নট এ সায়েন্টিফিক ডিবেট এজ আই অলওয়েজ সে নাও ইট ইজ ইট ইজ এ রিয়েল ফেনোমেনা ইট ইজ হ্যাপেনিং In the Sundarbans, the effects of global warming have submerged almost 19,000 acres of forest land and are steadily submerging many more islands. Salinity has increased both in the aquifers as well as in the rivers, a direct result of less fresh water flowing into the delta. If we don't act in the next 10 or 15 years and act strongly, then the, the emissions that we give out over these coming few decades will build up in a way that causes the damage later. So even though it's coming later, you have to act now to head it off. If you're underestimating the impact of climate change, one side of uncertainty says the, the consequences will be catastrophic. On the other side, if we say we are overestimating it, then you'd say, well, we would have spent some money uh, unnecessarily to deal with climate change. But I think that small amount of additional cost against the catastrophic changes that can take place should spur us to action. Beyond the towering Himalayan peaks in the far north of India, this is Ladakh, the land of mountain passes. Mountain passes and majestic glaciers, glaciers that feed some of Asia's largest rivers, the biggest sources of fresh water for millions of people. What we are seeing today are cycles around a very emphatically visible long-term warming trend. Over the years, Norfolk's seen the winters getting shorter. There's less snowfall, and what little snow there is melts away rapidly, leaving the region long before it can be put to use in the sowing season. It's a cause for alarm, but it's also a cause for optimism because it shows the way in which we can tackle this climate change challenge. And critically, it shows that the costs of action are less than the costs of inaction. It bridges the link between the scientific evidence and the economic cost, which has not been attempted hitherto for the simple reason that it is terribly difficult to do. How do you actually quantify the impact of climate change, of warming, of hurricanes, of, of changes in, in climatic patterns into economic costs? And here again, uh, the very important thing it does is to attempt that quantification. What he also brings out is the major uh, efforts needed for adaptation, adaptation by farmers, fishery uh, people, uh, fishermen, uh, adaptation for the disaster management. During 1999 and 2005, contrasting disasters like flood, drought, and cyclones have hit the state 10 times. The state's Human Development Report says that disasters have wiped out the state's six years of gross domestic produce killing close to 30,000 people and displacing close to 1 million people just in one decade.
since the 1999 super cyclone, scientists have warned that Orissa's disasters are not that natural, but may be a dress rehearsal for global warming-induced climate change. For the people of Orissa, climate change is already happening and affecting their lives. They believe that in the future, they will suffer more due to climate change-induced disasters. Obviously, the cost should be borne by those who have really caused this problem primarily. Well, the government's introduced a range of uh, taxes over the last uh, 10 years that have been green uh, taxes. The Chancellor this morning uh, talked about the climate change levy. The money is recycled back to business. He talked about the landfill tax and also packaging uh, directive. In all those areas, the government's been fair in the way it's approached this issue, it's seeking to change uh, corporate and individual behavior, and that seems to me to be the right basis on which to judge future actions. What Sir Nick Stern suggests, for example, here is a quite an interesting suggestion. He says that let us impose a large uh, requirement of cutting, a large cut in the emissions of the developed countries so that they will be forced to, to significantly reduce their emissions. Because they won't be able to do all of them themselves, they will have to buy carbon reductions in other countries. And because they, they will buy it from developing countries, this would provide large incentives for developing countries to reduce their emissions and earn some money for carbon reduction. You've got to have a carbon price, you've got to have incentives for people to cut back on carbon. You've got to learn more about technology and we've got to overcome some of what the economists call market failures, whereby uh, people don't really see the returns to uh, energy efficiency. And also, part of that story is to get people to understand what the issues are and they will change their behaviour themselves. In Rio, in 1992, there was a framework convention on climate change. Under that framework convention, it was realized that climate change threat is largely created by industrialized countries, that there is a differential responsibility to take this action. However, it also requires that we must require, action must be taken by everyone, so a joint action, but with differentiated responsibility was to be taken. Well, the government's obviously uh, committed to use all levers and instruments that are available. We announced them at the appropriate time, which is at budget time. I think that we've always been clear that there has to be a fair sharing of responsibility between government, business and individuals, and that's what we're determined to continue. The sooner we act today, the more we will be able to mitigate that cost. So uh, now is not the reason to, to do finger pointing about who is responsible. The fact of the matter is that it has happened. And we need to move on from here. This is an important point the, the report makes, which is to say, don't look back, look forward. Well, this is a global problem that requires a global solution, common responsibilities for all countries, and that's what we're determined to lead. That's what uh, Sir Nick Stern's report is telling us, that we need to act, and we need to act now.